to see Radhika Singh. Today we are going to start a new topic, capital budgeting. This topic is very important from your examination point of view because it has great weightage, not only from theoretical point of view but also from practical point of view. So theoretically and practical, both questions are there, and generally like 20 to 25 marks, as we have seen in the past examination, questions are there from this chapter. Capital budgeting is same as what we do before making any long-term investment at home. See if you want to purchase a home. We compare it whether it is more beneficial for us at the present moment to stay in a rented place or to buy our own house and pay the installment and the interest amount over the loan. So we compare all these options bases are availability of the funds. So when the same decisions is taken at a official level or you can say it's taken at an organization level we say that it is basically the capital budgeting decisions taken so capital budgeting decisions are basically for the capital outlays on the long term investments why such decisions are taken because there is certain time value of the money the money which we are investing today is more than as compared to future so we can say that the rupee 1 today has more value than rupee 1 tomorrow or vice versa you can say then rupee 1 tomorrow has less value as compared to rupee 1 today because we can say that if today we are not getting that amount we can invest it somewhere so there is certain opportunity cost attached to it how because let's say that if i ask you that you want a price of rupees 10000 so do you want to receive it today or after 3 years which option would you choose which option is more seems to be more preferable so if you are a rational investor you will say that give me my 10000 rupees today because you have an option you can either invest this 10000 for 3 years and could multiply that this amount so there is certain opportunity cost attached and that's why the money that you are receiving today has more value than the money that you will receive in future apart from that the other factors like inflation and also whatever i am saying that i'll pay you back after three years is just a mere promise so there is a risk that i might not pay you the amount so there is a default risk is there and also when you're getting the money today there is certain impatience when i promise you to pay it back after three years when the money belongs to you so obviously the money in hand today has more worth than the money which is expected to be received in future so money has a value and it reduces over time so if there is an option b that i have to receive 10000 after 3 years if i have to know the present value of this 10000 it must be less than 10000 because though i am receiving 10000 after 3 years but the present value must be less so if i have to compute the present value of 10000 it has to be deferred or it has to be discounted by the expected amount or you can say that minimum desired return that I am expecting through which I can multiply my amount in 3 years. So mathematically if I present the present value it is the cash flows divided by 1 plus R where R is the rate of return or you can say the expected required rate of return and T refers to the time period. So in our example it is 3 years. So 10,000 is the cash flow that you will receive after 3 years. Let's say that I'm expecting that if I'm receiving 10,000 today, I can invest it and earn 10% per annum rate. So my minimum required rate of return is 10%. So if I have to compute the present value, it is 10,000 divided by 1 plus 10% and this is for 3 years. Multiply by 3, right? So let's do an example to make it more clear. If I have to compute the present value of rupees 80,000, which is expected to be received after 5 years, when the required rate of return is 10%, so the present value will be 10,000 divided by 1 plus 10% to the power 5, because it has to be invested for 5 years, which is equals to 49,674. This means that 49,674 rupees today is equals to 80,000 after 5 years. So 
49,674 worth is equal to the worth of 80,000 after 5 years. So you got it clear that the value of a money is more today as compared to tomorrow. So if in the same example, if your required rate of return is 15%, so if your R return required rate is more, the present value of amount will decrease to 39,774. So this implies that if the rate of return is more, the value of your money decreases in future, it's more discounted. So if when our rate is 15%, 39,774 is equal to 80,000 after 5 years. This is how to compute the present value. But this is a present value which I am receiving in one lump sum amount. What if I am receiving the, or you can say when the cash flows are in stream, you say in year 1, I am receiving 80,000 rupees. In year 2, I will be receiving 70,000 rupees. In year 3, I will be receiving 50,000 rupees. So before making an investment, let's say that I have to invest a certain amount and it promises me that in the first year, the return will be 80,000. In second year, the return will be 70,000. So before making such an investment, I have to evaluate that what is the present value of whatever amount because 30,000 fourth year must have a less value in today. And this has to be compared with the cash outflow as in zero period. So with the given example, I have to compute the present value when my required rate of return is 10%. So the 80,000 will first be discounted by 10%. Since the time lag is only one year. So PV stands for present value and FE is the future value. So present value as in first year will be 80,000 divided by, I have to discount it by 10%, right? So this is the same formula. If I say that, uh, do you remember guys, principal and amount formula? The principal is to be invested at an interest rate. So you can get a amount, how much you are investing in it. So now you have the amount and the interest rate. If you have to compute the principal amount, you have to divide amount by the interest rate. So here the principal amount is the present value. That's why we are discounting the amount with the interest rate. So 80,000 divided by 1 plus 10% to the power 1 because there's a time lag of one year. 70,000 is expected to be received after two years. So 80,000 present value plus 70,000 divided by 10% to the power two because it is to be received after two years. Likewise of 50,000 and 30,000. When we add back the present value of all the four years, we'll get the present value for the cash flow stream. Next is the future value. So if I say that, let's go vice versa. So if this is present value, if I have to compute future value. So I'm going back again. So 49,674 is the present value. This implies that 80,000 is the future value after five years. So future value is the lump sum amount. You can say after a certain period of time at a given rate of interest. Mathematically, so this is the same thing. Future values, present value multiplied by 1 plus rate of interest to the power, the time period that you are investing. So if you have an example that you have to compute the present value of maturity amount rupees 10,000, which has been given on 15% interest for 5 years, while the required rate of return is 10%. So the future value of rupees 10,000 at 15% will be 10,000 multiplied by 15% which is equal to 20,113. So you will receive 20,113 by investing rupees 10,000 today. But this 20,000 will be received after five years. So what is the present value of this 20,000? You have to discount it by the required rate of return. So 20,000 after five years is equal to 12,488 rupees 0.94 in current. Right? And the next is to compute the net present value. So we have computed the present value. We know what is future present value. When we have to compute the difference between the outflow and the inflow, it is called as net present value. So NPV is the difference between the present value of all the future cash inflows and outflows. So let's say that your friend asks you for a loan of rupees 100. 
and he promises you that he will return you after one year with rupees hundred and nine. Let's say that uh, the interest rate or your required rate of return is ten percent. So, is it beneficial to lend to your friend or not? So, what is the cash outflow today? Hundred rupees. The cash inflow after one year is hundred and nine. And what is the present value of hundred and nine? I have to discount it by ten percent. So, one divided by ten percent is equal to point nine zero nine. So, if you in calculator you divide one by one point one, you'll get over point nine zero nine. So, hundred and nine multiplied by point nine zero nine is equal to ninety nine point zero eight one. So, outflow is hundred, inflow is ninety nine rupees eighty one. So, the NPV is negative. Since the NPV is negative, because the outflow is more than inflow, you will not lend to your friend. And net present value is the difference between the PVCO and PVCI. So here we compare that how much outflow and inflow is there. So it is only beneficial when your inflow is more than outflow. So all these things we are taking off in a very small investment. But what if when you have to make a long term investment? So analyzing the inflow and outflow is very important at that point of view. Because they involve huge capital investments, and it's also important because whatever investments in assets that the organization do, it represents a very large commitment of their financial resources. And these funds they usually remain for a very long period of time, and also the organization derive their benefits from these assets only. So they generate. their revenue by investing into such assets so investment into these assets and doing the analysis before making any investments is very crucial or you can say long term planning of an organization so capital budgeting refers to the long term planning for the proposed capital outlays and their financing so if a company or you can say organization is taking a decision whether they want to replace some asset or you can say repair the same asset again or before investing into certain assets they are actually analyzing that whether that project is beneficial so that means they are comparing their outflow with their inflows and also whether the outflow is lesser in option of repairing or is lesser in getting it replaced it's more beneficial for the company to lease that particular asset so is the lease expense is more or to buy that asset and the installment amount is more so the outflows are compared which is more beneficial for the organization point of view so capital budgeting not only dealt with the financing of the assets but it is also dealing that how those finance or fund being utilized into the organization so there are various techniques to analyze whether capital budgeting techniques or whether the capital budgeting decision is beneficial or not so to analyze a capital budgeting decision you can say two types of techniques one is a traditional one and the other one is a modern technique so traditional one technique is also called as non discounted cash flow technique because time value of money is not considered in such techniques so these two techniques are payback period and accounting rate of return but there is a criticism that the time value of money is not taken and money has its value attached with the time modern techniques also which is called as discounted cash flow technique where value of a money is being discounted over time so the techniques are net present value profitability index internal rate of return and discounted payback period so we'll discuss all these techniques one by one but before applying these techniques there are certain types of decisions or you can say there types of projects are there in one project is a search like that if you accept project a you can't go for project b and if you say for project b you can't go for project a or if you assess for project a project b has to be taken into consideration so the projects can be bifurcated as mutually exclusive complementary and independent projects so mutually exclusive means that acceptance of one option means rejection of the other option so both the options could not be taken at one go so let's say that again the repair option so either you can repair that asset or you can 
buy a new one you cannot go with that you are going to replace the old option and buy a new asset also so these two are the two mutually exclusive projects you either go for that option or you go for another option complementary projects are the opposites of mutually exclusive project if you opt for one option you have to go for the another option also so means that if there is a set it means accepts all the projects and if it is no it means reject all the options and independent projects are one which does not affect the decision on the other asset let's say that you are taking an option that whether to buy this asset or not and there is another project or going on whether to buy project b or not so decision of project a will not affect the decision on project b and that is called as independent project so with all these types of projects three types of decision where you can take you can say that either to accept or to reject so it's either yes or no simple and mutually exclusive decisions are the one which means that if i'm accepting this thing that means there's a rejection of the other decisions since capital budgeting decision is dependent on the capital so it need not to be necessary that the capital is unlimited so there are limited resources there's scarcity of resources there are certain budgets which are prepared by an organization for their investments so capital rationing is taking a decision taking that scarcity of resources into account so it's not like that the most profitable project is considered it's also to be considered that how much funds can be there so it's not only that this project is more beneficial but if you do not have that much funds how can you go for that decision so a decision is taken basis the limited amount of funds that the organization has so this is a broad overview of what we are going to discuss in capital budgeting chapter thank you we will discuss regarding how these decisions are taken and in their techniques in an next session keep smiling and have a nice day if you have any questions just leave a comment